always say they identify the exact same way that you do. We always say that you're not alone. Someone is going through the exact same thing that you are. Who's to say that you can't be that one? That one person that is noticed in the crowd of hundreds and thousands of people. All of us at some point try to defy our identity. We try to break out and be unique in this world full of billions and billions of people. We're all longing for that one thing that makes us great, or that one thing that makes us different. Um, in classrooms, especially on the first day, professors ask us, um, what is your interesting fact? Or give me something that you know makes you unique. And most people say, um, I have a brother, I have a sister, my favorite color is green, blue, whatever, I like sports, things like that. Those are all great, but dictionary.com identifies or defines identity as the condition of being oneself or itself and not another. According to um, census.gov, there are 6,980,919,861 people in the world. As soon as you are born, you are identified by with a number, um, with a footprint, and with a name. As soon as you move further into the years, your identity starts to take form. You're being molded and made by society, by your parents, by teachers, by your friends, and pretty much everything and everyone around you. Soon you'll find out what it means to be, or what it means to be identified by the color of your skin, by your sexual orientation, by your faith, by your socioeconomic status, by your weight, whatever, what have you. I can continue to go on and on with examples of how we are defined or identified. So take Lady Gaga, for example. Here she's pictured in her um, meat suit that she wore to the MTV Awards. She has countless numbers of outfits. She wears them in the streets, she wears them to award shows. Wherever she goes, her uniqueness is what identifies her as a person. Um, because Gaga makes it okay, it's okay for others. Um, she wants to be known and she wants to be her own self by defining herself through her eccentric behavior and her outfits that she's wearing. She is the first one to get up on an award show and wear a meat suit. And she's the first one to perform while wearing bubbles on a show. Um, and we have to give her props because she is original and she's the one and only Lady Gaga. Um, when I look at the question that I posed earlier, and the fact of, about the interesting fact um, and having my own uniqueness, I'm kind of like, wait, I really don't have anything that is unique to myself. Most of the time I say, well, I have a twin, and most of the time that works out, but in this case, Rach has a twin. <laughs> so, like I stated earlier in class, I'm a twin, and pretty much we did everything together growing up. We played sports together, we shared birthdays together, um, we dressed up for Halloween together. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we basically did everything together. We were compared we were always in competition with each other, um, and we were always being compared as a unit, and I was never compared as an individual. Um, if my sister were to get an award, they'd be like, Sarah, why didn't you get that award too? Or why didn't you do just as good as your sister? Or, you know, we, there would be one spot left on the team, well, we can't put one of you on the team because we can't split you up. So we'd always be compared and defined as a pair. So, just last year, we actually stopped living together for the first time, and we stopped seeing each other on a daily basis. Um, our relationship actually started to become a little rocky, and because basically I wanted to branch out and find myself, and find that unique thing, and stop being in the shadow of my sister. Well, it worked out for a little while. I started being my own person. Um, I started coming up with di different facts in class to tell people because I didn't want to say that I was a twin because I didn't want anybody to know. But granted, we had our ups and downs during that, that time. I was always still being compared to her. She was always still being compared to me. But we realized that we are better as a pair and not separately. I know I'm unique and I'm not worried about being compared to her or in competitions with her. I identify as a twin and I've chosen to embrace that and not shy away from it. Um, basically, I had to lose my identity as a twin to find it. 
um, I may have found it, but I'm not done yet defining myself. I'm not done yet, you know, like making those de definitions of who I really am. So today in our society, people are always trying really hard to be different and ending up losing their identity in the process. Um, they're always losing what makes them truly unique because they're always trying to emulate something or someone that they're really not and not being their original self. So sometimes I personally don't agree with media messages, but I think that a few shows actually get it right. And like Rachel talked about, I'm going to talk about Glee. In this episode, Santana um, shies away from the fact that she is a lesbian and it makes her who she really is but she's shying away from it because she's afraid or embarrassed and doesn't know the consequences of telling people and how they will actually really take it. Um, but this episode is unique because each character really defines themselves in a different way and is not afraid to express it. This is one of the first shows that really talks about and embraces real identity, like sexual orientation and actually chair users for the first, first time really on TV. Um, another example is Ellen DeGeneres. She really embraces her uniqueness and her identity as a comedian, as a beautiful, blonde, lesbian woman. That's who she is. She knows exactly who she is, what she wants to accomplish, and really leads a happy life embracing who she is and her identity, all the things that make her who she is. Um, she shows us that we don't have to be eccentric or crazy or out there to really identify with who we truly are. She's one of the first ones to come out of the closet um, and regarding her sexual orientation, so she is truly original. But these are all, you know, kind of celebrity accounts. Um, but we can, we can go there too. We can, we can define who we are. Um, and no one has the same thing as everybody else. So I want to get down to the nitty gritty and look at Betsy because I know her. Um, Betsy has a unique laugh. I found plenty of people that are passionate about God like Betsy is. I found plenty of people who are super skinny but can eat whatever they want, whenever they want, just like Betsy. I've even found people named Betsy, just like Betsy. <laughs> no one ever laughs like Betsy Whited laughs. She is very unique in that, in that way. Um, when I find someone that laughs like Betsy, I'll just come up with something else unique that defines Betsy. <laughs> it really doesn't matter, really, even what I think, or what society thinks, or what Gaga thinks. Um, if you think you're unique, then you can be that one. Identify how you want to identify. Not a song lyric, not a celebrity, not a close friend can tell you really what that is. We're all searching for really what defines us. What can make us stand out in the crowd among hundreds and thousands of people? We are always looking to be different, and we are always answering that question, what is your interesting fact, with what we think makes us unique. But find out what makes you different. Get down to the nitty gritty and embrace your identity, no matter how big or how small, because we're all original and we can be the one in